Good evening, everybody. Yat A. Casey John Yanishia. My name is Casey John. I come from the Navajo Nation, and I work as the Native Pride Project Coordinator at the Tucson Indian Center. Um, tonight, I just wanted to introduce our virtual events. It's, there's a series of activities happening throughout the month of September, because September is National Suicide Prevention Month. Today, specifically September 10th, is Suicide Prevention Awareness Day that serves within our tribal communities itself. Tonight, we're going to talk about suicide happening in our tribal communities, and then we'll hear a little bit more from Angela Montiel and Christine Chavez, who are also here at the Tucson Indian Center. This is just a call out for any Native youth interested in taking our community health needs survey. This data is going to help us with our strategic planning here at the Tucson Indian Center. It takes about 35 minutes and there's a $20 gift card if you do complete the survey. So if you're interested, schedule an interview with Francine Gachipin at 520-621-5072. The first question I want to pose to you is, what is suicide? There is definitely a stigma around the word suicide, and it can be a difficult subject to talk about, especially if you have a close family member or a friend who has committed suicide. But the CDC defines suicide as death caused by injuring oneself with the intent to die. This infographic really shows the picture of what suicide looks like in Arizona. And I do want to pay specific attention to the fact that suicide is the second leading cause of death for ages 10 to 34. And that's within all communities in the state of Arizona. But within our Native American communities, we typically experience higher rates of suicide than any other ethnic group in the country. And this diagram really breaks down between the ages about how many suicides were reported between the years of 2010 to 2019. And if you can see the first half of life, um, that blue bar, which represents us as natives, is much higher than the green bar, which represents the rest of the country. What's interesting to point out though, is that elders or people who are in their later years actually are lower than the rest of the country. We also want to point out that males show a higher risk of suicide in all communities, including our native and tribal communities as well. And this video really kind of speaks to our native males in our communities, and hopefully you, you get something out of it. Seven generations ago, you were already imagined. Your place in this universe was already foreseen. Across those generations, the message has come unchanged. Your time here is sacred. Your life is the legacy of those who came before. Your spirit is strong because they were strong. Your presence is proof of that. You are on the path of seven generations past and seven yet to come. Your spirit has seen truth and consequence. It has seen the light of life's joy and the weight of its pain. Sometimes that weight is heavy. Sometimes that weight is more than one can bear alone. But you are not alone. Of that, I am sure. If you are contemplating suicide or know someone who is. There is help. There is someone to talk to. To talk to someone or to help someone you know, call or live chat the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Call 1-800-273-TALK. That is such a powerful video. This next diagram really breaks down between males and females what suicides were reported between the age, between the years of 2010 to 2019. And you can see males are at much higher risk or show a higher risk than females within our communities. So what does this mean for you? Um, we definitely want you to recognize the prevalence of suicide that's happening in our tribal communities every single day and every single year. And we want you to participate in many of the programming initiatives we have here at the Tucson Indian Center, but also learning those intervention strategies to then teach our Native youth to be active, to keep 
up with their mental health and to get help when they do need it. And of course, a reminder that we want you to eat, sleep, and move every single day. I love this quote, and I think it really means a lot to me, but definitely think about don't give up. You've still got a couple of people to prove wrong. There's always people who may want to put you down, but there are other people here, like at the Tucson Indian Center, who want to support you and for you to be successful. I want to take this brief time just to introduce our next guest speaker. Her name is Angela Montiel, and she is our youth and community health educator. Thank you. Hello. My name is Angela Montiel. I am the Youth and Community Health Educator here at the Tucson Indian Center. And my presentation today is titled, Protect Yourself and Loved Ones, Be Alcohol and Drug Free. So I'm just gonna give you some statistics. On average, Native teens first use alcohol at the age of 14. American Indian and Alaskan Native teens use marijuana and prescription drugs at twice the rate of the national average. Many American Indian and Alaskan Native youth believe that their parents do not strongly disapprove of them drinking alcohol or smoking pot. But there's a lot to celebrate because recent research suggests that just talking with your teen about drug and alcohol use early and often can give them regular self, greater self-control and confidence to say no when pressured. More than 75% of American Indian and Alaskan Native youth surveyed had not used drugs at or alcohol in the past month. American Indian and Alaskan Natives 12 and older were the least likely group of any race ethnicity to currently use alcohol. So what's the message? The message is talk to your child about alcohol and drugs if possible. Start the conversation before they're in school, but it's never too late. Make it clear that you strongly disapprove of underage smoking, drinking, or using uh, any other drugs. Never let someone drive who has been um, smoking or drinking or using drugs. And set a good example, live a drug and alcohol free life. So alcohol and injuries, hospitalizations from school uh, alcohol overdoses among 18 to 24 year olds rose 25% over the past 10 years. And alcohol is involved in about 70% of fatal injuries during swimming or boating and plays a role in one third of suicides. And suicide is the second leading cause of death for American Indian and Alaska Native youth ages 4, 15 to 24 years old. And American Indian and Alaska Native males 15 to 24 year olds have the highest rates of suicide. So if someone you know threatens suicide, talks about wanting to die, shows changes in behavior, appearance or mood, abuses drugs or alcohol deliberately, inju injures themselves, appears depressed, sad or withdrawn, you can help stay calm and listen. Let them talk about their feelings, be accepting and do not judge Ask if they have suicidal thoughts, take threats seriously, and don't swear secrecy. Tell someone. Protect yourself and your loved ones. Build spiritual and cultural roots in Native traditions. Eat breakfast five to seven times a week. Maintain good phys physical and emotional health. Let others know you care about them. Avoid drugs and alcohol, and talk about your hopes and dreams. Next, I wanna introduce our next speaker. Her name is Christine Chavez, and she is our diabetes prevention specialist here at the center. Hi, my name is Christine Chavez. I am the diabetes prevention coordinator here at the Tucson Indian Center. I hope you're all doing well. And today we will be talking about stress and exercise. It being Suicide Prevention Month, we are here to uh, have you be aware of um, how you can deal with stress and, and uh, different ways of, of dealing with it. Well, we have a chemical in our body and it's called dopamine. And that chemical in your body, it sends messages through your nerve cells and it helps you strive and focus and find things interesting. You also feel like learning, your motivation is up, your heart rate is great, your kidney function, it helps you with kidney function, it helps you sleep. Mood, your mood is better and your attention span is a whole lot better. 
when your dopamine um, is up. And um, when you have a low dopamine, it can cause anxiety and depression. And also use of recreational drugs can also cause depression and anxiety. Also drinking alcohol can cause that too. Um, inadequate nutrition can make you feel sick, can make you feel down. It can lower all your nutrients in your body, which can lower your dopamine. And uh, also lack of sleep can help, can, can um, lower your dopamine. Exercise can help with circulation raises heart rate and it gives you energy and sometimes when you have that energy you feel better about yourself you you're able to get up you're able to go places you want to go places but when you don't want to do anything that causes depression and you can always tell when you're depressed because you lose so much motivation you lose um the energy to do things that's when you have low dopamine and it also, um, exercise also helps relieve stress and anxiety and improves your sleep and also your mood. And eating bananas, apples, berries can increase dopamine levels and healthy eating habits also improves uh, dopamine levels. Of course, talking to your PCP is always recommended because they might have to give you some type of medication. Um, talking to a counselor can also help. So always make sure that you do have uh, when you don't feel right always talk to your private care physician your doctor a friend a nurse a counselor talk to somebody when you're not feeling the best part of how you how you feel how you know you should feel it if you're feeling down call somebody talk to somebody we're here for you call the tucson indian center we're here for you and your body also produces another chemical it's called endorphins endorphins make you feel happy exhilarated and it reduces the feelings of pain um, exercise releases endorphins that send the receptors to the brain and reduces perception of pain and it gives you energy exercising also strengthens your heart it lowers your blood pressure it increases energy level it improves muscle tone strengthens your bones and it reduces body fat and of course you also lose weight and then you feel better about yourself because you've lost weight you're eating better you don't feel so depressed you know exercise can help in so many ways it can help you feel you know like the the feeling the endorphins give you when you exercise it's like happiness you know when you feel happy that's because your endorphins are, are, are producing. And when you don't have enough endorphins in you, it's because you're not exercising. You want to, you know, you just don't have the energy to do things. So if you exercise, you know, and it's only 30 minutes a day is what they recommend uh, for you to exercise. But, you know, sometimes if you can do a little bit more, you know, every step counts one step at a time is why we trying to encourage people to exercise, to go ahead and, uh, you know, it helps your self-esteem, keeps you from being depressed, keeps you from, from getting stressed. And it helps relieve a lot of stress, you know, even uh, any type of exercise like batting balls, kicking a ball, playing some kind of um, game with your kids, uh, r run, you know, running around, playing tag, do something um, to, to move that, you know, that way you can start feeling better about yourself. You can get more energy, you know, because you have to stay well mentally and also physically, emotionally, and spiritually, because if you're not having those four balances in your life, you know, you're not feeling too good about yourself. So, you know, I encourage you all to do at least 30 minutes a day of exercise. And, and remember, we are here. Tucson Indian Center is here to help. Our number is 884-7131. And you can talk to anybody here if you ever need to talk to. But always remember um, to stay with your, you know, call your primary care physician if you don't feel well. Call a counselor. Talk to somebody. You know, you're not alone. We are here. But moving, you know, um, Exercising, eating right will always make you feel a whole lot better and it'll boost your morale. 
it'll raise your self-esteem. With that, you know, this is Suicide Prevention Month, and that's why um, I am here to talk to you about how you can release some anxiety, some stress, because it's simple, simple things that we can do for ourselves to make ourselves feel better. So I want you all to take care, stay safe, be well. And remember, we care. We are here. Thank you. I want to thank our guest speakers today and send out a reminder that if you know someone who is thinking of suicide, have them call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. They can be reached at 1-800-273-TALK or 8255. So now that you know a little bit more about Hope for Life and what this event really represents, remember to register. There's only a few spots left, but our Hope for Life events, virtual event, there's a free care package that will be mailed to you at your home. You can register through SurveyMonkey. There's a little diagram you can actually hold your phone up to if you have a smartphone. And the second part is definitely look at joining our 5K walk and run. It's headed by Drew Harris. We're going to be offering free sweatshirts to those who prove that they've completed it. And you can go through runsignup.com to register for that event. And lastly, if you need to get a hold of us here at the Tucson Indian Center, we're located in downtown Tucson. Our address is 160 North Stone Avenue. Our phone number is 520-884-7131. And we have an amazing website that has all of our updates and a Facebook social media if you wanna know what's, what's going on within the center. Just a friendly reminder, appointments are required and face masks will be required in our buildings and any events that we're sponsoring this year. I hope you have a great rest of your evening and a great weekend and hopefully we see you all soon. Thank you. <laughs>